If you are new to PC monitors or would like to know how to set them up, this video which has been sponsored by Philips should cover everything you need to know. Indeed, I'll be taking their 27 inch 1440p 75Hz IPS monitor, which is called the 27B1U5601H, and giving you a step-by-step -step guide from unboxing it to actually placing it on your desk and powering it on. Now before jumping into it, there is something very important to consider how you're actually connected up to a monitor. And of course this affects the overall setup that you might have. Because if you're connected up in an incorrect way, you might find that you will not be able to achieve the maximum refresh rate or resolution, therefore potentially hampering your experience. In this respect, you want to make sure that the port versions of the monitor and in terms of your graphics card, or for example your laptop, are correct, in order to achieve the maximum refresh rate and resolution that's quoted by the manufacturer. Now for you to understand the different port versions and the limitations that some of them might have, make sure you check out my detailed video on it that can be found up on your pop banner or indeed down in the description below. Now moving past that disclaimer, let's get on to setting up the monitor. Now within the box you'll find a power lead, manuals and even there's display cables which I just referenced before. Indeed these are recommended to be used with the monitor because they have been actually tested by the manufacturer. This is often a first point of call if you're not achieving the maximum refresh rate or resolution of your said monitor. Now as for the stand, it often doesn't require any sort of tools and can be done by hand. Indeed, in this respect, this Philips monitor's stand can be plugged into its base and therefore tightened by your hand only. Then, the main stand unit when assembled can simply be slotted and clicked in to the main panel. You want to make sure that it's on a flat surface and something that is actually relatively sturdy and ideally not on carpet, just in case you get any sort of static shocks. Now once assembled, you want to pick up the monitor and place it on your desk. In this respect, I'll definitely recommend holding the monitor panel itself rather than the stand, purely because this will prevent any sort of injuries or indeed any sort of damages occurring to the monitor. So moving on, we get on to plugging in the monitor. First off, you want to ensure the power lead is in and also that the on switch is also being enabled. In this particular Philips monitor, you actually have the ability to turn it on and off manually. Then we get onto the display cables. As I did mention before, you want to ensure that the right one has been selected for your setup and indeed for the monitor's refresh rate and resolution. And then if you're choosing a display port or HDMI cable, you want to ensure that it's plugged in correctly because there's only a singular way that it can be plugged in. So make sure you're not actually forcing it. Equally, a display port cable sometimes even has a small little button whereby it has a release latch. Make sure that you're pressing that before pulling out the cable because this will ensure that the monitor and indeed cable are not damaged. Elsewhere, of course, you have got USB Type-C connectivity and this is a lot more accessible because it is fully reversible. Now once these main two cables are plugged in, it's time to look at the optional cables that you can also use. In this respect, this monitor has got a flurry of USB Type-A ports, which can be handy for providing charge to let's say a smartphone. Now aside from this, the USB Type-A cables can be useful for plugging in your peripherals, such as your mouse and keyboard. Now if you do want to achieve this, you want to ensure that the monitor itself is plugged in to your computer and therefore for you to achieve this there is a USB type C port at least on this particular Philips monitor whereby it's then terminated by USB type C or type A port. If however you have an older monitor you might find a USB type B input which you'll be able to see how it looks like right here. Indeed over here this will therefore then be terminated again via USB type A port into your computer. Now why would you want to do this? Well aside from your peripherals, this will also unlock some extra functionalities, such as for example a webcam like you'd find on this Philips monitor, or even accessing the KVM switch functionality. In case you're wondering what a KVM switch is, or indeed what it does, it effectively allows you to use two different devices simultaneously with your same peripherals while plugged into the monitor. If you want more information about this, make sure you check it up on your pop banner or indeed go to the description below. Now I would like to point out that if you do want to achieve audio playback from your monitor, it will be done so automatically via the display inputs. Indeed here, DisplayPort, HDMI and USB Type-C will transmit audio information, allowing you to therefore play back audio directly from the monitor, be it from the built-in speakers or indeed via the built-in 3.5mm jack which is present on this Philips monitor. Now once you've done all of this, you want to ensure that you've got a good sort of posture by adjusting the monitor to work for you. Now in this respect, this Philips monitor has got height, tilt, swivel and pivot adjustments, all of which are certainly appreciated and therefore aids your overall back health. 
Indeed, I've been across many London offices and I've seen many people slouching over or indeed hunching over, which is not the correct way of using a monitor and therefore can of course affect your overall back health. Having the right sort of height of a monitor is extremely important. So therefore, if you feel that your monitor's height is still not high enough, you might want to look at getting a monitor riser or a desk riser, be it for yourself if you're working from home or from your employer if you're working in an office. So moving swiftly on, we get onto powering on the monitor. And the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you're setting the right refresh rate and resolution. More often than not, you'll find that the refresh rate is actually downscaled from what it actually can be running. Case in point is this Philips monitor that was running 1440p at 60Hz while connected over DisplayPort in terms of the quoted 75Hz. Now this was very easy to adjust by simply navigating to my Windows display settings and adjusting the refresh rate of the monitor. And equally, if you have a gaming PC, you want to ensure that you are plugged in directly into your graphics card and not your motherboard, and then go onto the appropriate NVIDIA or AMD control panel and adjust the refresh rate and resolution. Now once you've done all of this, it's time to adjust the monitor settings. And here you have got the on-screen display, or OSD for short. Now some manufacturers provide you software-based controls, while all of them will provide you hardware controls, such as the Philips 27B1U5601H has got some physical buttons found at the bottom right of it, thus allowing you to adjust the monitor settings. Now indeed, different types of monitors will provide you a variety of different options, but in this particular instance, this Philips monitor provides you a plethora of different settings. Here you can adjust the power sensor and light sensor, equally the low blue mode, whereby it reduces the blue light being emitted from the monitor. Then you've got the different inputs which you can select from, and then you've also got the picture settings, whereby you've got quite a degree of control. For example, you'll probably want to leave the contrast, sharpness, and also the gamma controls in terms of their default settings, but you'll want to adjust the brightness based on your own ambient light conditions. Now in case you're wondering what the smart response is, that is effectively really aimed towards gamers. It gives you a better response time of the monitor, on the flip side providing some inverse ghosting, therefore that can lead to a little bit of an inferior visual experience. Effectively, you'll probably want to adjust this if you feel the monitor is responding a little bit slower than it should. As for smart contrast, or for example the likes of DPS, which stands for Dynamic Power Saving, you'll probably want to leave these disabled. But of course, you can read the manual for some more information to see if these certain settings affect you. Equally, you've got the PIP and PBB mode, which stand for Picture in Picture and Picture by Picture. Very handy if you have multiple different sources and you want to display them. Then, of course, you're going to have audio settings. Sometimes you've got extra features, such as, let's say, noise cancellation. And indeed, you can enable or disable these features. Now, as for the color tab, this will certainly be of interest for video graders or picture editors, specifically if there is a dedicated sRGB mode, such as like you'd find on this Philips monitor. If, however, you don't fall in that category, you might want to go on one of the color temperature presets, such as the 6500 Kelvin mode, as it will effectively give you a little bit of extra pop in terms of the image that you're viewing. Equally, you have got the ability to adjust the red, green, and blue values independently and manually, if you so wish. Now as for the OSD, you have got the ability to change the language, adjust the OSD settings themselves, such as the positioning of it, and also go through the different USB settings. As for the webcam, this monitor does have one, whereby you can adjust the webcam light, and on the notion of LEDs, you can also enable or disable the power LED that is found at the front of the monitor. Now it's always very handy to have the resolution notice if you're switching between different sources as it will get you the best out of this monitor. On that note, if you go onto the information tab, you'll be able to see the refresh rate and resolution of the monitor. Elsewhere, you'll be able to see over here that we have got a DP out multi-stream. This effectively means when you're connecting up a secondary monitor to your primary monitor, you'll be able to see if it clones or indeed extends it. Very handy if you're running a multi-monitor setup. So there we have it, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's covered everything you need to know about setting up a monitor for the very first time. If you've got any sort of questions, make sure you pop it down in the comments section below and equally make sure you check out the guides that I've referenced throughout this video down in the description below. Now if you enjoyed this video and want to see more from the channel, make sure you drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.